I guess she does dunk the whole thing in and that just terrifies me. I think I just need to buy a new edger. <laughs> Today I am going to go out and clean my garden tools. I got into a conversation the other day with my husband and he accused me of being a neglectful garden tool owner. And you know what? He's right. I'm really bad at cleaning garden tools and I'm really bad about leaving them out in the elements. So I thought I would give my tools some much needed TLC. I've never done this before. I know that that makes me a bad gardener. Whoops, you should take care of your tools. Your tools are really important to your success as a gardener and I need to be better about that. So I thought I would bring you along today and explore this amazing new world of taking care of your gardening tools. Let's go. I'm bringing y'all along on one condition. You can't ever tell my husband he was right. No. Mm -mm. If that word gets out, I am never going to win an argument again. Puppies are already outside waiting for us. Look at that, on his little bed with my messy patio still. I will be taking my inspiration today from the Garden Answer channel. As I've said in previous gardening videos, I really like her channel. I like that she has simple, easy how-tos and her garden tool cleanup how-to. It seems like a pretty straightforward one. So I'm just gonna do that. It's only about five minutes long. So I'll, I'll try and pop that up on the screen so it plays at the same time that I'm doing this so you can see in real time what's going on. So today I want to show you how to clean and sharpen your gardening tools. And I've got several different examples right here. I've got my lovers, a pair of snips, and my hand printers. And I'll be showing you how to clean up the blades, how to brush, how to uh, oil with mechanism, and then also how to sharpen up the blades. I need to go get my tools, it looks like. So let's go do that. It looks like she is doing a couple pairs of hand printers. She has some little snips as well as like some standard hand printers. And she also has her loppers, a half moon edger, and a trowel. And so I'm going to go get all of those things and bring them to the table so that I can clean with her. Where are all of those things? Okay, so my snips, my printers, and my snips are in this cabinet. So I'm gonna grab those. Hi. So I have my little hand tools and I'm going to stick them on the table and then I will go grab our offers and that half moon shovel as well. And I think I know where all those things are, so go me. Got my loppers. My very old half moon shovel. Here I've got my brush shovel, which is what I use to catch my grass and my hand shovel. I feel you. I've never done it. Okay. I need to get a bucket of water, just standard water, I guess, no soap. So I'm gonna get a bucket of water and a scrub brush, and then we'll get going. And you've seen my other videos, you know what bucket I'm using. It's the Home Depot bucket. Oh yeah. I don't think I need a full bucket. I am only doing a little bit of tools. Turn this water off. Serve water where you can. I don't know where we would have a scrub brush. Like I have scrub brushes, but I don't know if I have scrub brushes that I want to give to the garden. So. I have this. It's a brush that I've used to scrub around the house and I figure if I can scrub around the house then I can probably scrub my shovel. Oh, I don't have scrubbing bubbles. I wonder... She says she's using it to get sap off. I don't really have any sap on there so... I wonder if I could use like vinegar. I think I could use vinegar. So I got a towel because she said she dries them off and then I got vinegar because I don't have scrubbing bubbles. We don't usually use a lot of harsh cleaners in our house so we don't have anything scrubbing bubbles adjacent either. So I'm hoping vinegar works. Okay. After a few minutes, I use an SOS steel wool scrubbing pad to buff up the metal and remove as much debris as I can from the blade. She said she does this with basically all of her tools. She washes them off first, but I'm guessing she doesn't do it with the cutting instruments, like the, the pruners and the loppers. I, 
I'll see, I guess, later on, but I'm just going to do it with the half moon edger and the trowel for now, and we'll see where that goes. She mentioned that she uses a steel wool pad. I don't think we have any of those, but we do have this steel wire brush, which I can't imagine that's any different. It still gets the gunk off. So I'm gonna use that instead and scrub off all of these tools. I assume that you rinse them off again. I haven't watched that far in the video, but I'm going to go off of that assumption. Then I dunk it again in water and dry it off. Now I want to sharpen the edge of the blade and I'm using a 6 inch mill file to do this and this will help the blade cut through roots and soil really easily. You want to find the beveled edge first and hold the file at a 45 degree angle and make quick motions away from the blade all along the edge. Okay, does this one even have a beveled edge? I guess I should dry it off again. She said she used a six inch file. I don't know if we have one of those and if we do, I have no idea where it'd be, but I do have a little tiny sharpening tool for my snips that maybe will work for this. Let's see. And of course, because I'm an organized person, it is kept with my snips. So I do know where that is. So I have my little sharpening tool and hopefully that'll be good enough. She said to find the beveled edge. And this thing is so old, I don't think I can differentiate where it looks like it has a beveled edge on both edges and this is a sad looking thing this thing is ancient so a couple of takeaways so far is i know now why she used a brown towel to dry off her tools this one is now covered in dirt and rust so note to self use a brown towel and i'm going to see if this will work on this giant this is a tiny little hand snipper tool um but this shovel is clearly in need of some love so let's just i think i just need to buy a new edger <laughs> i don't feel like this is any sharper i feel like this is a really dull tool and that is why it's so frustrating to use Ooh, so dull still but um yeah, I tried. Maybe I'll invest some time in finding our larger blade thing. Okay, so how does she say to do this one? Our last step is to apply a light layer of vegetable oil over the blade to help keep rust away. Oh. Now, if you have a tool with a wood handle like this one does, you want to feel the wood to see if it's nice and smooth. And if it's not, take a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand the handle to where it feels really nice, grit. And nice and smooth. The handle on this tool feels pretty good, so I'm going to skip that step. 150 grit sandpaper and some vegetable oil. Okay. I couldn't find 150, but I did find some 120, and I also got a rag and some vegetable oil for the blades. Let's get started. While I was getting the vegetable oil, I had the thought, I wondered if you could just spray. You know the kind of vegetable oil that's in the spray can? I wonder if that would work on this. That'd make it a lot easier. Well, it's certainly shinier and cleaner. I don't know about sharper, but I'll take two out of three. But I am gonna apply a layer of linseed oil with a rag to help extend the life of the wood by protecting the seed. Next, I'm gonna work on this hand trail, and you can tell by the looks of it that this is one of the most used tools in my garden. It Ditto. planted well over a thousand orange plants last year in my garden alone. I I'll wish. Maybe next year. I clean all the excess soil off the blade and handle, dry it, and then spray it down with scrubbing bubbles and let it sit for a few minutes. I am going to use a little stainless wire brush to help clean ah, the bigger pieces of I used that. And we'll follow up with my SOS steel wool pad. You can spend as much time on this as you want, but once you're happy with how it looks, just rinse it off with water, dry it, and then proceed with sharpening it the same way as the edger, with a 6 inch mill file and then a light layer of vegetable oil. This tool also has a wood handle, so I applied linseed oil to finish. Moving on to the hand pruners, I'm skipping the first cleaning step because these don't have a bunch of soil on them. 
So I'll spray them down with the um, just don't have soil on them, but they do have gunk. So I guess I'll 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 wash them off in the bucket first. Scrubbing bubbles, and after a few minutes, I'll use the more scrubbing brush bubbles. I like to use this type of brush for these pruners because they make it really easy to get into all the tight spots. Then I follow up with the steel wool pad to buff up the metal, and then wash them off with water and dry oh. them thoroughly. She junk some. I'm using a carbide file. These are the easiest, in my opinion, to use for small. I have that. I actually have the one she uses. Woo! On the beveled edge of the pruner, and move them across the blade in a sweeping motion a few times, checking the blade for sharpness as you go. When they feel nice and sharp, flip the blade over and check to see if there's a little burr on the back side of the blade, which is just a little bump that's created by the sharpening. If there is one, use the file and sweep it across the burr a couple times to remove it. The last step is to apply a little three in one oil to the mechanism of the pruners. Open and close the pruner several times to help spread that oil throughout the mechanism, and they feel just as good as new. I cleaned up and sharpened the snips next and did exactly the same thing with these as I did with my hand pruners. Super easy. Okay, so I guess she does dunk the whole thing in, and that just terrifies me, but all right. While I'm waiting for those to sit with the vinegar on them for a little bit, I thought I would clean these up. Okay, and then she says that she dries them thoroughly and then sharpens them. So that is what I'm going to do next. To sharpen these, I actually have the same tool that she shows on her channel, and so that's pretty exciting. And that means that I'll probably be able to do this one properly, unlike that Half Moon Edger. So she said, you just glide it. This was an awkward position to, to try and sharpen. I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I'm finding it incredibly awkward to sharpen these in this fashion. <laughs> Maybe that's why I've never done the work on my tools that I should have. I will say this, they are sharper and they are cleaner probably than they ever have been since I got them. Okay, so we've done the Half Moon Edger, we've done the Trowel, and we've done all of the hand printers. All that's left are the loppers, and so I'm curious if it's gonna be the same as the hand printers or if something's gonna be a little different. I'm gonna tackle the loppers, which are in kind of a bad way. They were left out one too many times last year. I'm gonna treat these the same way. That makes me feel better about my tools. You can see a lot of rust made it to the inside, and I wanna get rid of this as much of that as possible. I sprayed them down with scrubbing bubbles and let them sit for a few minutes, then went after them with the wire brush and steel wool pad. Because these were so far gone, I repeated the steps several times. Then I put them back together and sharpened them using the carbon file the same way that I did with my hand printers. These took a little bit more filing though because there were several notches in the blade that I had to file out. When that was done, I applied a little three in one oil to the joints and they're done. So that's pretty much it, you guys. I hope this video was helpful. Okay, so it more or less is the same as the hand printers, except I have to take the blades apart. Okay, so she took hers apart. Let's see here. Got it. Ha 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 ha. All right, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous that I'm not gonna get these back together. I've never taken my tools apart before, so um, I'll wanna hold on to these pieces. And I guess we'll just wash these and then spray them down. Okay, some real talk for just a second while we wait for the vinegar to do its job. I have been trying to be creative with camera angles in a variety of settings for today's video because it keeps raining. In Oregon, in October, you can get any sort of weather. Rain, sunshine, hail, sleet. We haven't had snow. I, I won't say we've had snow, but fog, all that stuff. And today it has been sunny and rainy and cloudy and warm. And I'm trying to just get this video done. And I'm doing all this funky camera angle stuff because, because it's raining and I don't want my camera out in the rain. So if it seems like I'm shooting in weird angles, it's because I am and it's because I'm trying to keep my camera and the laptop and all the tools that I'm working so hard to winterize under the umbrella. 
Okay, I think they're ready. Let's go ahead and get scrubbing. Now I know that she said she puts them together first and then sharpens them, but it seems like it would be easier to sharpen them and then put them together. So I'm gonna do that first and hopefully there's not a reason <laughs> why she puts them together first that I find out after I've already done it. good and they're very sharp which is a little bit scary I'll need to be careful when I use them so I ended up cleaning the same tools that she did I cleaned all of my hand snips and pruners I cleaned our big loppers as well as a trowel and a half moon edger I will say that this is probably a lot easier if you keep up with it annually and not let it go for the lifetime of the tool like I did I really appreciated how easy it was to follow her instructions I did hit a few snags because I didn't have the same supplies she did, so I didn't have scrubbing bubbles. I switched that out for vinegar because I know vinegar helps with rust and things like that. It seemed to work just fine. My tools were not nearly as shiny as hers were, but they're also probably much less cared for, so I'm not sure if having scrubbing bubbles would have changed that or not. Maybe it would have, but it worked just fine with vinegar for me, and if you want to use vinegar, I would recommend it. I was also lacking the filing tool that would have made filing our half moon edger a lot easier, so I didn't really get to experience the satisfaction of having that become a sharper, more usable tool. I will be looking for a six inch file because I know we have one lying around. I just don't know where, and I didn't want to spend the time looking for it while I was trying to film this video, but I was able to do everything for the hand shears and the loppers, and they all look really good they're very sharp I can't wait to use them next year when I'm gardening and everything cuts really well so if you're looking for a good tutorial on how to clean your gardening tools I highly recommend this one all of my tools are very very sharp which makes me a little bit nervous because I think I'm used to working with dull tools half the time and that means that I'm gonna have to be careful because I might be snipping fingers off if I don't pay attention to what I'm doing. So that will be an adjustment period for me. She recommended that you oil the mechanical part of the snippers. I have not done that yet. I will do that after this video. I just don't know where our three-in-one oil is, so I need to ask Ian because I don't want to go snooping around in the shop. It's just gross and full of spiders and mice. Overall, my verdict on cleaning gardening tools is it's really important. I need to start doing it more, and if I kept up on it, I probably wouldn't have as big of a headache on my hands as I did today. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe so you can join me on this gardening adventure called life. And let me know in the comments what you do to winterize your tools, what tips and tricks you like to use. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. God, did she clean her house yet? The answer is no. No, I have not cleaned my house yet. Oh, I don't have sunglasses. It's cloudy. I probably can get through without sunglasses. There we are. That was awkward.